What's up? Tyler here from All Hell Breaks Loops, and I wanted to do a reason tutorial on how to sample or replace in Dr. Octorex, pulling in uh, Rex loops and being able to change out um, certain things like a snare drum or a kick drum or something like that. So what we'll be able to do at the end of this tutorial is get a loop going and then actually switch out the bass drum sounds. So for whatever reason you wanted a snare or um, on like a really low kind of, um, yeah. I don't even think my headphones will reproduce that. Um, but if you want to switch out that sound, we can do so, and it's all automated, so you won't have to play with MIDI settings or anything like that. So step one is that we're going to go ahead and create a combinator, um, and that's the utilities pull down and combinator. And we'll just put it on this side so it's a little bit easier to see. Once we've got that combinator up, uh, we're going to go into it, and then again, go to utilities, and we are going to create a line mixer, six by two. Um, so this is where we'll have all the audio routed into, and then we'll assign some um, some rotary controls on the top to be able to play with it a little bit better. And of course, the star of our show is the Dr. Octorex. So we'll go ahead down to instruments, and we're going to pull up the Dr. Octorex loop player. So I have this set so that it comes with the default kit. Um, we're going to go ahead and reset that. Reset device, that's right on top of it. And then we're also going to go through and disconnect device because there's some routing that we're going to do. Um, once we have this up, uh, we're going to actually go to open the file and um, just if we're navigating from home, Reason Factory Sound Bank, uh, obviously Dr. Octorex patches. Then we're going to go into uh, drums, acoustic drums, and uh, we're going to keep it studio. Trying to keep it heavy, we're going to nail it. And here we've got the 2x4. We're going to make a scream device. So you can either right click or you could just do create and do, I think it's in creative, scream 4 distortion. Again, same thing, we are going to reset it and also disconnect from everything. CV line suite line processor. Um, so this obviously doesn't come with reason, but you can download it for free um, until December 31st. So I'll include a link below, but this is actually really important. We are going to put in a um, Kong device. So under instruments, Kong drum designer, again, it comes default. So we're going to reset that and then also disconnect it. This would be all the equipment that we need. Now we get to go to the fun part, and that is patching cables. Woo! So you can tab that, and then you can see already I've got the cable management hidden. Um, you can go into options, and if you, we've already got everything all set, but we're not going to hear anything if we hit run in here. So what we're going to need to do is we're not actually using this first one. We're going to actually use the second one. So we click over here. Um, again, we still won't hear anything. We need to route it through. So we're going to take the main outputs and we're actually going to route those up into the input two right here. Um, so as you saw, I dragged the left one in and then automatically did the right one. And now I can go to the back and lo and behold, we hear two by four nailed. Great. Now that we have the loop going, we're going to need to figure out um, actually which slices are in our case, the kick drum. Um, so we can just listen to it. And if we count very carefully, we could figure that out. But we're going to be a little bit more scientific. We're actually going to look at the, um, the rec slices and take a look. Now you can either hit function F7, or if you go to the top window and view sequencer, that'll guess in here. The shortcut on OS X is command and E. You can also do options and then edit mode. You can see this is a keyboard roll. We don't want the keyboard roll. We actually want rec settings. So if you go over to here to rec edit, this will give us exactly the information we need. If we play here, we can just kind of jam through the loop, but we'll figure out that slice one and slice five. These are the kicks. So now with that information, again, hit F6. That'll take us back to our rack. And we're actually going to focus on right here, slice one and slice five. Um, these will be our kicks. So now if you go to slice one, we're going to change the output instead of left, right, which would be the master out to one, two. And then we're going to do the same thing with five. So we've got one, two on that. Now with that in the back, we're going to then take this slice output one and two, and we're going to route it to right here. So now what we're going to hear is, lo and behold, the same exact thing that we heard a second ago. And that's because we're actually splitting the routing. We're getting the main output into right here, and we're getting just the kick into right here. And that's all going to the line mixer, which is going into our combinator, which is going into our, our fancy reason mixing console. And we hear it all just like we would normally. So nothing's really changed on that, but that's fine. It's transparent. We can isolate the kick and the rest of the track and then manipulate the kick signal. Now what we're going to do is actually take the signal and through the aug send, 
we're actually going to send it to the screen. And again, I just had to drag the left there and automatically drag the right. And um, then we'll drag the output back over here. One very key thing that we will need to do is actually change this from post to pre. And I'll explain that in just a second. That's so that we can manipulate the level of what we're, what we're hearing and uh, some automated rotary controls. But then the, the signal that goes actually through and gets converted to CV um, will actually stay intact. So that won't drop out as well. So we've got some more flexibility with that. Um, so now that we've routed this through, on the front here, we're going to turn the aux all the way up. And then on the aux, we'll turn it all the way down. So now we're just pushing the signal through. We're not actually going to hear it. It's just now it's, it's kind of gone into the CV realm. Or we won't be able to hear it. So with the screen, we're not actually using any of the settings on it. The screen has a, has a unique feature where it can do this auto CV output. So when it gets a signal in, it'll just push that out as CV and in our case, audio. Um, but what we really need is the auto CV output. We're going to then take that, route that to the input of the CV suite line processor, um, and then take the output of that and route it into the gate in of the Kong. Then on the main output out of the Kong, we're going to take this and bring that all the way up to the mixer. So now over in here, we'll just kind of make sure we're all set drum module. And like I said, for the time being, we're just going to do a really easy Kong setting. We could go through and get fancy and go and you know to the modules and do um, you know um, a sample or even like a Rex uh, loop or something like that. But for our purposes, we're just going to use this stock bass drum. So we can play with the settings and things you know later on. Now, very important, we're going to go through the CV suite, and we'll actually have to do a couple tweaks here. We'll actually turn need to turn the gain all the way up, and then over here on the foldback, we're going to bring that up to about noon. Uh, because if we don't, there's um, kind of a mismatch in, in the signal strengths, and it won't give us this full sound. It'll give us like the super low velocity that we can barely hear. Um, so now with this all set, we can hit run. And sounds sampled. Uh, now what we're going to need to do is go back in here. We'll turn that off for a second so it doesn't drive us crazy. Show the programmer. And we're going to go into the programmer here, line one mixer. So now we're going to do the rotary programming for the combi so we can have some kind of simplified um, adjustments instead of poking off all this stuff. So we're going to start out with the line mixer one, and then we're going to go through and we're actually just going to cut to the second in line. Go to rotary two, and then route that to, or I'm sorry, use that to control level for channel one level and we're just going to leave it at minimum zero maximum 127. Keep this one on rotary two and we're actually going to invert this so now we're going to have the minimum at 127 and the maximum at zero and that's for channel three. We're going to go channel two level and keep it at zero 127. Lastly we're going to go to Kong rotary and we are going to use rotary one and it's going to go to global master level keep it as is. Go back up here, and now we're going to re rename the rotaries. Uh, we're going to call rotary one. Um, we're going to change that to sampled kick. Go to rotary two. We will be changing that to wet dry. And lastly, rotary three. We're going to switch it up to everything. Oops. I suppose it would help if I spelled it right. Everything else. So now we can actually see this in action. Rotary one is actually changing. Well, if we went down here, um, it's actually changing the sampled so if we just verify yep zero a billion don't suppose that's the actual number but uh what dry will actually see you can see right here um the knobs will actually invert so what dry what dry what dry we'll just leave it in the middle for now and then everything else you can just see that's kind of isolated so if we start like this we'll start with zero sample kick that was the original kind of get a little more That's with dry turned way up. Uh, and then we'll slowly tuck it in. Give it just a little bit of acoustic. So this is a way that we can kind of go through and change these settings without poking around in all these areas. You know, if we want to clean it up, we could click show program, and even clean it up that much. Now just play with this, but I suppose we would want to go through. So the neat thing about this is that we're not using MIDI. And so that way, if we do any changes, um, let's say we copy this to track and we, we replace it with an amen break or whatever, or something more interesting than two and four nailed. Um, it'll automatically make those changes as long as we're still using this loop. And then if you went into, let's say, another loop, 
then you just identify where the, the, the I'm sorry the bass drum is here and then do the same sort of routing to instead of left right to one and two um, and then down here obviously we're just using the stock bass drum we can play with the sounds of this um, we can go through we can do um, some kind of more modern sounding hip-hop get this sort of thing pitch it down really low um, And then we can also go through and we can play with um, nano samples and things like that, or even other bits and pieces of Rex loops. So it's it's um, or nothing at all. So it's fairly it's fairly flexible in that you can go through and and add in your own samples and things like that, but then still be using OctaRex loops, which I'm becoming more and more of a fan of. If you have any questions for me, make sure to leave them in the comments below because someone else could be thinking the same exact thing. Uh, if you like what you saw, please make sure you've subscribed to my channel. And I'm also going to incorporate um, what I did in this tutorial in a, um, in a music clip. I'll li link that. Um, thanks so much for checking out the tutorial. And if you have any other requests, make sure to let me know in the comments below.